Hello everybody, my name is Jean-Marc Corry and I work at Genoscope. So I will uh, talk about de nouveau sequencing and assembly of complex genomes. So first I will introduce the, the Genoscope and then I will describe the sequencing technologies that we use at Genoscope. And then I will uh, explain how we can combine these technologies to uh, generate high quality uh, genome assemblies. The Genoscope is a French national sequencing center. It has been created in 1997. So its main uh, goal is to provide high throughput sequencing data to the academic community and to carry out uh, in our genomic projects. So we are mainly focused on biodiversity and the main application of the sequencing is uh, the novo assembly and metagenomic project. So for example, we participate in the Tao Ocean uh, large project and we participate in the creation of several reference genomes like oak, uh, seed rape or panel. But today it's not enough to have just one individual genome, so we need to have several uh, reference genome per species. And uh, we'll see uh, how we can generate this uh, high quality uh, genome assembly. Having a high quality assembly is very important. Recently we published the whole genome, which is a complex genome. And thanks to the high quality of the assembly, we were able to generate large families of genes duplicated in tandem. And we show that these genes families were associated with a disease resistance. We found this striking pattern in other tree species, and uh, we think that it may be linked to the long lifespan of trees. Another example of complex genome is Brassicanapus, the old seed polyploid genome as a complex evolutionary tree. And again, thanks to the quality of the assembly, we were able to study homologous recombination between the two uh, subgenomes of Brassicanapus. At Genoscope, we use mainly two sequencing technologies, so the Illumina and the Oxford Nanopore. So the Illumina technology is the most famous, so it's a high throughput sequencing technology which provides very short uh, fragments, uh, short reads. So it's about uh, 100 and 200 base pair, uh, but the rate is very uh, low. In comparison, the Oxford Nanopore technology is able to sequence very large DNA fragments, so in the order of uh, several kilobases and uh, the rate is uh, very high. So at the beginning of the technology, five years ago, the, the, the rate was about uh, 20 or 30 percent. So now it's uh, it's better, it's around five and ten percent. So if, uh, we have another device, so the Sapphire system, which uh, allows us to generate uh, optical maps, and we'll see later why it's important to have this kind of uh, device to generate high-quality uh, genome assemblies. So here you can see the first device commercialized by Oxford Nanopore. So it's a portable device that you can plug into your computer using the USB interface. It's a low-cost device. It's uh, $1,000 for the uh, instrument. And it's the first uh, technology that doesn't require DNA synthesis. So you don't need to uh, synthesize a second strain of DNA, of DNA to read the DNA. So really it's a, it's a, it's a technology that can read the DNA fragment. So it's low cost because you, you don't have to, to buy some reagent for the sequencing experiment. Uh, it's a technology that is able to produce uh, with up to several megabases. So it's the only technology that is able to sequence very large DNA fragments. Today the rate is about uh, 5% and we started to use the uh, nanopore technology uh, through the early access in 2014. Here is a mini ion sequencer, a pocket size instrument on which you can plug a flow cell that is composed in the hub corner of a biological membrane. In general, there are 500 pores embedded in a biological membrane, and uh, each pore is a nanoscale hole. And we can read DNA independently in uh, each pore. In its devices, Oxford Nanopore passes an ionic uh, current through nanopores and measures the changes in current uh, as DNA fragment pass through the pore. So the information about the, sun, the change in, uh, in current can be used to identify the uh, nucleotides that were in the, in the pore. At Genoscope we have uh, six uh, minion devices and one prometheon. So we have already uh, sequenced more than 1000 flow cells from 50 different organisms, so from DNA or RNA samples. Uh, our main application is de novo assembly, so we have already uh, worked on uh, 
a lot of yeast strains and uh, fungi genomes and now we are working on plant genomes so the largest uh, genome that we are working on is a uh, uh, 17 uh, make, uh, gigabase genome and we use the nanopore technology to perform gene prediction so uh, using RNA samples and we have developed some uh, some tools at GenSpot so for example we have developed a, a tools to error correct nanopore reads using uh, short DNA reads Nanopore is a fast evolving uh, technology and we are able now to sequence very long fragment uh, of DNA uh, for example here we uh, were able to uh, sequence entirely uh, the chromosome 1 of a, of a yeast uh, sample and uh, the chromosome 1 is uh, uh, 230 kilobases and uh, the read that uh, we sequence span the whole chromosome and get the two telomeres on both sides. Genome assembly is very difficult, it's like a, a jigsaw puzzle but uh, you have some missing pieces for example so you are not able to, to sequence some compartment of the, of the genome. You have some uh, pieces that are uh, multiple copies so for example you have repetitive in your repetitive element in your genome and you have no corner if you have a circular genome so it's a it's a very complex uh, uh, jigsaw puzzle one of the main difficulty of uh, genome assembly is repetitive elements so imagine that you have a genomic region with a three repetitive elements so r1 r2 and r3 so if you use the short read sequencing uh, strategy uh, all the reads that come from uh, the given repetitive uh, region, so the, the red, the blue, and the green ones, will be collapsed together in a single county. So first your assembly will be uh, fragmented. As you can see here, we have five contexts for a single genomic region, and uh, we you will underestimate the, the repetitive content of your genome. As you can see here, we have only one contig that comes from the three repetitive elements. Another difficulty uh, with genome assembly is the cases of uh, heterozygous genomes. So imagine you have uh, two haplotypes so with uh, uh, similar regions that are uh, in, uh, in black and uh, uh, heterozygous region, so in red and blue here. Again, if you use a short read sequencing strategies, all the uh, reads that come from the homozygous regions will be collapsed together in single context. So for example, here. One, four, and seven. But in the case of uh, heterozygous regions, you will generate two uh, different contexts that correspond to uh, each of the haplotypes. And again, uh, if you don't have long reads, you will not be able to resolve the correct path in the graph, and probably you will mix uh, the haplotype uh, in the final assembly. So again, it will uh, uh, fragment the, the assembly. So in this region, you will have uh, seven contexts. And it will uh, overestimate, overestimate the size of the haploid genome because in this case we will have allelic duplication, so contig 2 and 3 and uh, contig 5 and 6. So uh, we show recently that uh, uh, read lengths matter for uh, genome assembly, and uh, for example, here we uh, generate several uh, assemblies of uh, a yeast genome. So the yeast is a very has a very simple genome, so it's about 12 megabases. And uh, even if it's a simple genome, we show that uh, we need very long reads to be able to resolve uh, fully the, the genome. So, uh, for example, here all these assemblies contain one single contig per chromosome, so we are able to result genome as uh, you can say and uh, in this case we uh, the assembly were generated with a uh, read with an average length length of about uh, 20 or 30 kilobases so uh, you see in this example that even if the yeast is a, has a simple genome you need to have very long reads to to be able to fully resolve uh, the genome assembly problem when we started to use the nanopore technology to sequence plant genome, we have a look in the public databases, and uh, as you can see, uh, we observed that there, there were a lot of uh, already available uh, plant genomes, and uh, uh, their contiguity was uh, highly variable. Uh, on this figure, you have the, the contiguity of the of genome assemblies, and uh, this uh, contiguity is uh, measured using the N50. 
it's a metric that uh, reflect the contiguity of an assembly. And if you have N50 uh, larger than 5 megabits, you can say that you have a, a good assembly. And you can see there is a lot of uh, the plant genome that have uh, an N50 uh, lower than 5 megabits. So our objective was to uh, generate uh, assemblies using long grids and to uh, have N50 higher than 5 megabits. When the throughput of the sequencer was sufficient, we decided to uh, focus on large genomes, for example, here plant genomes. So we focused on brassica genomes. So brassica include uh, important vegetables for human nutrition, and there are important models for uh, understanding polyploid plants. So there is a high variability between morphotypes of the same brassica species. So you can see uh, uh, on the on the figure here that there is a very different morphotype from brassica rapa and uh, the bottom of Brassica oleracea, uh, and in this context, it's very important to have several reference genomes per, per species. So we decided to uh, sequence four Brassica genomes. So we first started to sequence two Brassica genomes, so Brassica rapa and Brassica oleracea, using the, the Minarian device, and we generated about 10 fossils per species. Uh, our main goal was to, to obtain uh, 30 x of coverage for each of the, the genome. And uh, the red size, as you can see, is uh, about uh, 60, uh, 16, percent, uh, 16 kilobases for the uh, Brassica oleracea, and it's lower for Brassica alpha. More recently, we uh, sequenced the Brassica napus genome, so using the, the premise ion device, and we only sequenced four flow cells, and using this four flow cell, we generate uh, around 100 uh, x of coverage for the for this genome and the average size is around 20 kb. So here are the results of the uh, assemblies. So we use a different uh, algorithm to assemble these, uh, these genomes uh, and uh, the cumulative size is uh, what we expect. And as you can see the, the N50 is, uh, is quite high so if you remember we our objective was to have an uh, N50 of at least 5 megabases, so we have uh, 7 megabases for Brassica oleracea and 10 megabases for Brassica napus. So it's lower for Brassica rapa, but uh, uh, as you can see later, we'll improve uh, this uh, contiguity. Uh, the longest sequences that we are able to uh, reconstruct uh, is around 20 megabases for the two uh, Brassica rapa and Brassica oleracea, and uh, 35 megabases for uh, Brassica napus. So it's, uh, it's uh, almost the size of the uh, chromosome arms, but it's not uh, sufficient to have the, the full uh, organization of the, uh, the genome at the chromosome level. So we need to, have, to add another technology to, uh, to push uh, this genome assembly at the chromosome scale. Agenoscope is a bio-nanogenomics technology. So it's a technology that needs to, to have an input high molecular weight DNA. And this DNA will be uh, labeled uh, at a specific site using uh, an enzyme. And uh, on the, the, the DNA fragments that have been labeled, they, they will go through uh, the, the device and uh, will, will capture uh, the molecule through the, through the flow cell. And we will be able to detect uh, the, the enzymatic restriction sites. And so uh, if we are able to visualize all the molecules, we can reconstruct what we call maps, and it's like a barcode, and uh, we'll uh, be able to uh, do the same using our assembly, and we'll compare the, the genome map with uh, the map extracted from our assembly. So this is the final uh, assembly that we obtained for the three Brassica uh, genomes. Uh, we obtained this assembly by combining uh, Oxford nanopore and uh, bio nano uh, optical maps. And as you can see, the N50 is very high now. Uh, it's uh, almost the size of the chromosome arm. And uh, for example, for Brassica rapa, uh, there are 10 chromosomes in the Brassica, genome, Brassica rapa genome. And for nine of these 10 chromosomes, we're able to, to, to reconstruct them in less than three uh, sequences. So it's a real improvement uh, over uh, short-read sequencing technologies and uh, other uh, long-read technologies. So in conclusion, we have already sequenced 40 eukaryotic genome at Genoscope, so with very uh, large genomes, so the larger the uh, width genome that we are working on. 
uh, and we are currently working on optical maps and genome assemblies. Uh, we have several genomes that are already at the chromosome scale level. Um, we, we get this result when we are able to combine long reads with uh, optical maps. Uh, one major complication is still the heterozygous genomes or regions that are still complicated to manage for uh, actual genome assemblers. And the array today is acceptable for the novel sequencing project, even if there is still an issue with uh, uh, in delve in the uh, nanopore technology. So what is important here is the DNA extraction, so it's a key point because we need very long DNA fragments to be able to to get very long reads using the nanopore technology and to get optical maps. So I'd like to, to thank all the, the members of my lab and I would like to thank the member of the sequencing lab at Dinoscope who uh, generate the, all the data we, we discuss here and our collaborators who provide us uh, uh, the DNA uh, uh, for each of the species we work on, and our funding agencies, OCA, Genoscope, and uh, Fongenomics. And I would like to thank you for your attention.